Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Monday, January 16th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Indiana game is in 229 days. The game against Michigan in 313 days. Oh boy, it is time to have that conversation. It is the conversation that's kind of driving everything around recruiting, around the transfer portal, around pretty much all of college football right now. We're going to talk about those three letters today, N-I-L, and oh boy, uh, things just kind of keep getting a little crazier. The numbers keep getting a little crazier. The uh, situations around recruitments keep getting a little crazier. We're going to try and get to the bottom of some of it right now. My guest today is Mark Giffler of BuckeyeHuddle.com. He just spent a bunch of time at the All-America game down in San Antonio, which meant he got to talk to some players and some coaches and just other people around the game of college football and came away with some really interesting takeaways on some issues that are really only started to, starting to come to the surface. Mark, I guess let's start with the guy who I'm sort of viewing as the tip of the iceberg here, Jaden Rashada, very highly touted 2023 quarterback, signed with Florida, and then didn't enroll with Florida, and then didn't uh, is asking for a release from his scholarship with Florida. It feels like his story, you know, some of the numbers getting thrown around are a little crazy, but it feels like his story might start to be, you know, the one of the first in what could be quite a series of those kinds of stories. Yeah, there's a lot of dumb money being thrown around right now, dumb numbers. And uh, I think a lot of guys are going to find out here over the course of the next six months as these freshmen start to arrive on ca college campuses across the country that uh, the maybe discussed or promised dollar amounts maybe not going to be there. So um, going to be interesting to see where this leads. But, uh, you know, we talked about it the last few months of the cycle, how some really stupid dollar numbers were being tossed around and that there there was a lot of skepticism about whether the players were actually going to be able to cash in to the numbers being reported. And it it seems like, again, a lot of wild promises were, were thrown around by, you know, we won't say schools necessarily, but collectives, uh, you know, affiliated with certain schools. And, uh, you know, some of them may not be uh, holding up their end of the bargain already, which is going to lead to all sorts of problems down the road. And one of the big kind of central issues here is the fact that, number one, there's different rules for different states. And so different schools are playing by different rules in terms of what you can and can't do when. And number two... Because it's, let's just say that some people are operating in a legally gray area, uh, that a lot of this stuff can't necessarily be in writing. You can sort of have a verbal agreement, but you can't have it in writing, which then makes this a lot more complicated from the player's side in terms of if someone reneges on a deal, what are your repercussions? You don't have it necessarily in writing. Because you can't really put it in writing because that would be, you know, that would be documenting something that is not necessarily legal in some places. It feels like that's kind of one of the real big complicating factors that everyone's trying to sort through right now. Yeah. So, again, some states allow high school athletes to participate um, in NIL. So for those guys, it's probably a little more simple. But for guys who are coming from places where. They're not supposed to be able to do that at, at the at the high school level. Um, those guys aren't really able to sign anything uh, until their uh, eligibility has been exhausted for their high school sports. So that's obviously one layer of this. Um, it it's also you know for for guys who maybe are signing something or are able to sign things, you know the the whole inducement component of this you're not supposed to be inducing players to commit to certain schools through with nil deals that's kind of being circumvented i know one kind of slick way i know some collectors are trying to do is is basically they'll write up a deal where you know let's just i'm gonna just use ohio state as an example because that's obviously who we cover and who we're familiar with i'm not saying this is happening at ohio state i'm just i'm using ohio state as an example so if if i'm trying to if I were Ohio State and I were trying to induce a commitment through an NIL deal, uh, a collective might w put some language in the deal that they must be, and it can be it can be hyper specific or it can be a little more broad, but must must be a resident of the state of Ohio, must be must be a resident of Columbus, must be a resident of Central Ohio, or uh, you know a certain you know area code or something, and so 
in theory, you're not inducing uh, a commitment to Ohio State. In theory, uh, if, you know, if it's a basketball player, they could go play at Columbus State, I guess, uh, the, uh, as, as like a JUCO player and still get the NIL deal if they're living in central Ohio. But that's the type of thing that's going on. So, you know, I'll use another, you know, again, so if, if I'm down in Alabama, I can, I can word a deal that, you know, to to fully vest the, the you know the the dollars being offered uh, you have to be a resident of Tuscaloosa or you know something like that so there are there are ways that are that things are being circumvented um i i'm not a lawyer so i you know is, is that going to hold up if that gets challenged i i don't know it seems like it might uh it seems like if if the um if the NIL uh, inducement isn't, um, you know, weighing in on something like that. It seems like the NIL inducement clause or whatever you want to call it is broad enough that would allow, you know, that would allow them to kind of, you know, circumvent that. So what I'm hearing is the new market inefficiency is commuting college football players. You live in one college town, you just commute to another. You can double dip NIL in both places. Uh, that is exclusive. Uh, must credit me, and uh, I get 10% of all of your uh, commuting-based NIL deals, college football players, moving forward. Uh, good news, I'm rich. Uh, bad news, boy, this feels like this is not just a problem limited to one or two people uh, nationwide. You know, this is, I, I guess you talk to a bunch of people, and you, you know, you were kind of texting us from down in San Antonio, and it was just kind of like, oh boy, like, <laughs> there is... There is some crazy stuff going on, and I don't know that people necessarily completely grasp, you know, just how widespread this is. So how how widespread is this? Are we are we you know, this is not just a one or two schools issue right now. This seems like this is, you know, a pretty significant issue, you know, sport wide. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's happening everywhere. I mean, these kids and, and, and their parents, they really better trust the people they're working with on these collectives, and they better really trust uh, their, you know, a lot of them now are, are smartly getting some type of representation. Um, they better trust their representation to uh, to make sure everything's ironclad and make sure they, they really trust what they're doing because, again, you're, you're seeing, and you started to see, I think, a little more of this toward the end of the process where teams are, you know, it's closing time, you know, you're trying to close on the, on your class and it's just like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give you this, we'll give you this. And not only are you not supposed to be doing that, which is, you know, that's another conversation kind of, but, but are, are there, is, is the money there, you know, or is it just, I'm saying what I have to say to, to, you know, get that kid to sign with whatever school I want him to sign with. And so, yeah, this is a thing that um, I, I know, you know, a, a lot of players and parents I've been talking to are concerned about. Um, and it's it's something that's going to continue uh, until, I guess, until, the, the you know, the, the organizations that are doing this are kind of outed either publicly or privately. What I suspect will happen is if certain collectives or certain groups affiliated with certain schools continue to operate this way, you know, recruits and parents talk to each other uh, across the country. It's a very small world at this point. You can get on Twitter. These people have relationships, you know, starting very early in their high school careers, if not sooner. And so it will start to trickle down like, hey, you know, these guys don't keep their promises. Don't go there. Don't listen to what they're saying. And so that's going to be a whole other can of worms when You've got school X, you know, who is, you know, can't really be directly affiliated with their collectives and their collectives are now costing them recruits because they're not, they're not coming up with the dollar amounts they said they were going to come up with. And so now you've got a really awkward relationship there. It's already kind of an awkward deal as it is to, to not really be able to be affiliated with each other, but to, <laughs> but to kind of be working together somehow. Um, so it's, it's already a very strange relationship. It's going to make things very, very awkward when schools have to go to their collectives and be like, why are you promising these figures and not delivering? And now our recruiting reputation is suffering. Yeah. It, and you know, the figures that are getting thrown around right now, you know, I, I don't want to cast any aspersions on anyone, but you know, I, I think the idea that a quarterback might get $13 million to go play for Florida is a little nutty. I don't, I don't think I really buy that number that has gotten thrown around, but I think that's the case with pretty much all of the numbers. Like how, how much stock can you put in these numbers? Cause 
I mean, let, let's do a little inside baseball here. We, we on staff at Buckeye Huddle have a group staff chat where we'll sometimes share information that we're hearing internally and not generally this is not stuff that we have in a reportable format. It's just sort of like, hey, here's what I'm hearing, just to sort of keep everyone informed. And we'll get, even from good sources, we will have multiple people on staff with different numbers on people, different schools involved with people. And, you know, again, none of this is in writing. And you can, you know, the incentives for players nationwide are to gas themselves up and, you know, school X, uh, you know, Wyoming State University has offered me $500,000. Well, I'm going to tell Montana A&M, hey, they actually gave me 1.5. Can you beat 1.5? Because it's in your best interest to get as much money as possible and to make yourself as impressive as possible. So it feels like this is something that just, you know, until this is more in, you know, stuff in writing, boy, this is going to be, uh, you know, kind of impossible to know what's what's true and, you know, who's who's really telling you, you know, what what's, re you know, separate the fact from the fiction, I guess. And the inflated numbers that are out there aren't just hurting the kids. They're they're hurting the schools. Um, you know, I, I talked to someone who's really dialed in with Texas A&M, and obviously they're at kind of the the forefront of a lot of the NIL stuff. They're one of those schools that I think a lot of people think are are really going nuts with NIL. And um, there was a there's a dollar figure getting thrown around that you know they basically they they spent like thirty million dollars, and the people at Texas A&M vehemently deny that that it is not anywhere in the neighborhood of thirty million dollars. It's it's far far less than that and what's happening if if you believe that what's happening is now you're attracting a certain type of recruit to your campus when those type of numbers get out and it's not necessarily the kind of recruit you want to attract to your campus it, you, everyone feels nil is important and i think every school feels nil is important i think every kid and their family at some level is is obviously curious about NIL and wanting to, you know, kind of see what opportunities are available to them. But what you don't want is someone walking into your office if you're at the head coach at, you know, state U and, you know, kids and parents putting their feet up on the on the desk and saying, Oh, you know, thirty million dollars for the last recruiting class, huh? Where's our you know, what what can we expect? And that's the first conversation you're having. And it's it's eye opening. It's not helping the schools, and it's not again. These aren't you know. It's one thing to sit there and go through an NIL presentation. Like here's you know here's what you know here's what you know we can expect as far as what 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 our guys did last year, and here's some of the big deals you know that were signed by some of our star players, and here's kind of you know where things are, and that can be part of you know the experience and part of the visit and part of. Um, just, you know, getting comfortable with the school, but, you know, to have, w when you start talking about $30 million in a recruiting class or something like that, and, and it's not maybe the, an accurate number, you're, all you're going to do is you're going to get all the people who are going to come in and say, well, here's my list of schools, you know, and here's the number next to those schools. You have to be the biggest number. And that's all I care about. And that's causing uh, headaches for, for a lot of schools right now. Yeah, it is interesting to me that a lot of the schools that had the big numbers attached to them last cycle, Texas A&M, Miami, some of the other ones, did not necessarily have the seasons that were commensurate with the investment that they were, uh, you know, the neighborhood of uh, number in which they were sort of uh, allegedly living. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh, impacts culture and all that kind of stuff with these programs. I do get the sense, as you said earlier, that some of this may become self-regulating where a school that has a reputation for reneging on deals or not following through on deals, we'll probably see that uh, stop working for them relatively quickly. So, but uh, yes, this will undoubtedly be something we talk about a, a good bit more as we sort of move through uh, this uh, recruiting cycle and the transfer portal cycle and all that kind of fun stuff. But wanted to at least have this kind of conversation real quick, lay out some of the stuff that Mark had been hearing that I thought was very interesting and uh, going to give you a little more context for uh, what is maybe going on behind the scenes in college football right now. So thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.